Welcome to the Brave Podcast. I'm your host, Connie Jacob, and I'm really excited for this week because I have a special guest who specializes in coaching ADHD adults. Where are my neurodiverse friends? I am one of them. I cannot wait to dive into this conversation with Maria. Welcome, Maria. Oh, thank you, Connie. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. And uh, you have a course coming up in a couple of weeks, uh, helping people who are needing to get some skills around ADHD. And so I thought it would be great to have you on the podcast to talk a little bit about how can adults manage their ADHD. And so often people who listen to my podcast are teachers or parents, and they're often trying to help their students or their kids who have ADHD. But oftentimes we, the adults who have it, need to know how to manage yeah. ourselves. And so that's why I mm -hmm. thought you would be the perfect guest. Um, what I would love to share, or just chat about a little bit is how, how does ADHD show up in an adult? Yeah. So that's very interesting. You know, so um, there's actually a lot of adults that are getting diagnosed uh, later on in life. And the reason why they kind of figure out is because their kid at school, you know, the teacher is like, oh, you know, maybe we should do a diagnosis. And then, and then the parents kind of start sort of, you know, investigating and they're like, oh, I think I have a lot of the signs and symptoms, right? And so the signs and symptoms comes in maybe, you know, like having a harder time sort of paying attention, staying on on task, um, you know, uh, sometimes recalling steps on, on how do we how do we do things? So that's called working memory, right? Uh, regulating our emotions is a big one. Um, and it, it's sometimes, you know, and this, this, this is the one that most people actually are unaware of, and it's a, um, time blindness. So as a matter of fact, people with ADHD don't have an internal clock and, and it's a real condition. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why they struggle so much to actually keep up, you know, with appointments and not being late and those kind of things. Um, so, you know, we see a lot of adults that come through because their children are being diagnosed. Um, and, you know, sort of raising a flag through school. That's interesting. Actually, mm -hmm. that happened to me. Ah. <laughs> cool. do, yeah, it is interesting because you start yeah, to yeah. Kind of see these patterns in your own life. Um, mm -hmm. What would you say to an adult who maybe listened to that list that you just mm -hmm. kind of gave as some as some signs? What would you say to someone who might be thinking they have ADHD, but they want to get that confirmed? Yeah, so I highly recommend that they get a, a full assessment. Um, and there's several people that can do that assessment. It could be a doctor, it could be a nurse practitioner, it could be a psychologist. Um, I work for a psychological practice, and so I, I often refer people to the psychologists that work under the practice. And the reason why is because a psychologist would give you a lot bigger of that of that understanding of, of how your brain works. And, and for me, you know, like just having a diagnosis and saying, okay, you have ADHD, that brings a lot of relief. But then there's a second part to that and saying, okay, I have it, but now what, mm -hmm. right? And so often when when you see a psychologist that, you know, specializes in ADHD and, and really understands what he or she is talking about, um, it, it just it just gives that person sort of like a, a map of, you know, like, how do, how do you work? You know, how, how does your brain work? You know, where does it do really good and where, you know, maybe it needs a little cuffold, you know, in certain, certain uh, skills, right? Um, so I always would suggest, you know, for people to actually go get a full diagnosis. Mm, yeah, very helpful. Very helpful. Mm -hmm. And do you find, like, I know the question that probably comes next is, am I going to need to go on medication? Now, I know mm -hmm. for me, when I got my diagnosis, I... I went on, um, I went on some kind of med. I can't remember which one it was. And I was up till three in the morning, just yes. wired. Yes. And I thought to myself, okay, note to self, yes. I don't think I want to go the medication route. Not that yes. that's wrong or right. Um, but what would you say in regards to medications? Yeah. Like so it's a personal choice. Um, and you know, uh, it's, it's a, it's a road, uh, you know, in our, in our home, we actually, uh, try medications. Um, and, uh, it was, it was, it was interesting to say the least, uh, going through with my husband and my child, um, because we don't have an exact science. 
um, we we can test someone and say like, this is a medication that works best for you. We just have to do it in trial and error. And often we need to have uh, a doctor, you know, a psychiatrist that really knows what he or she is talking about, uh, and and not just prescribing just for the sake of prescribing, right? Yeah. Uh, and we have to not only play with the different kind of medication, um, but also with the dosage, because we're all very different. You know, we come in different sizes, uh, and for some, some of us will react really well to a higher dose. Some of us actually will react really bad. Um, there's also that thing of like, for me, um, you have to weigh in, right? There's there's positives and negatives, right? And for some people, they take medication, they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. For some people, they take medication and side effects like yours, you know, like I can't sleep, right? Um, or, you know, I don't eat because it suppresses appetite, right? So you start losing weight and then, you know, maybe taking medication if you're not gaining any weight and you're you're actually, you know, like, it's, it's actually not good, right? Mm. So- it, I, I think it's a, it's a very personal choice. It's, um, you know, uh, like I said before, it, it's not very often that I have clients that come and say like, yeah, my first try was the ticket. And, you know, they just have to try, you know, like several do doses, several different, and just deal with the side effects as, as they go, right? Uh, and sometimes it's like you, you try one medication, they start at your lowest, they, they bring it up, you know, like, oh, it was too much. Maybe, maybe you know, like, there's still a lot of side effects. We'll bring it down. You bring it down. Still, those are side effects. Now you have to move to a different one. And usually, a doctor will say, you know, like you, you, you will be, you know, trying three stimulant medications um, to give it a good try mm. until they say, okay, maybe we move to a non-stimulant or maybe medications. It's just not the thing for you. And this is what a lot of people don't talk about: is that there is there is a about 15 to 20 percent of the population that actually don't react to meds well hmm. and so um if you look at it in all of the research that we have out there it says like 80 to 85 percent of people react well to medication well there's a percentage that doesn't hmm. and so being very mindful that maybe you are one of those cases yeah, yeah. that's if you do really want to go the right with medications. yeah <laughs> yeah and regardless of medication or not there's ways that adults can learn yes. to, to cope with their adhd and and actually build skills and that's what you do you yes. you coach adhd uh skills and how to work through things and so i'm i'm really curious which of those symptoms of adhd do you notice people struggle with maybe the most yeah um you know first i want to say that you know, come into the realization that you have ADHD, uh, there's not one solution. It's a multi multimodal approach, right? Um, and, and it's an approach that is very individualized. <laughs> and so you have to figure it out, become aware of where, where you're at with yourself, with your ADHD, with your life. Uh, what are you struggling with? Uh, what are, what are the things that you are really good at? <laughs> And and this is this is one that I I I find that most of my clients don't know. Um, I don't know what my strengths are. I've been focusing so much on you know like my lack of um, mm -hmm. that I just don't don't know where my strengths lie, right? Mm -hmm. And so coming to the realization that you do have a lot of strengths, um, and that yes, there are some skills that you know sort of because of the condition that you have, they go they go the side way, and just becoming aware of what those are and beginning to build some of those um, uh, strategies around it, um, and sort of scaffolding what you're not good at, and then and then really begin to work more onto the strengths portion of that, right? And what do we look like a multimodal approach, whether you choose to do medications or you, you choose to go the natural route, you know, like whether it's neurofeedback or you, you decide to do supplementation, you know, or any other stuff that helps you sort of with the concentration and sort of leveling of that dopamine. Uh, because at the end of the day, that's what ADHD is, is the, the dysregulation of the reward system, right? Like dopamine, the brain of an ADHD person doesn't move dopamine the same way that a, a, a non adhd -er does, right? Um, and so that's what medication does. It's just re regulating that. But that's not the only answer, right? 
Mm. Um, sort of figure it out, you know, like the connections that you have in your life for those working, they're not working, maybe working with a psychologist is if there's if there's uh, trauma, you know, that is influencing the way that you're relating to your ADHD. And then finally, you know, like if 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 you feel that you got a good handle, but you need more stuff, um, just, you know, come into a coaching session. Um, as coaches, we we help people to sort of kind of understand there's there's a big part of like you know the educational component into a coaching session when it comes to specifically to ADHD uh, but there's also there's there's a lot of brainstorming that we do together to sort of figure it out you know what's working for you what is not working for you let's just put you know things in place um, to help you actually thrive in life and and that's kind of you know my motive behind is that we should all be thriving and nobody should feel that they are falling behind all the time. Yes. And I really love that you mention reminding people of their strengths, because I think sometimes when we hear ADHD, we think, oh, there's so much wrong with that. Yes. But there is so much strength oh, with so that. So much. So much. It's incredible, actually. You know, um, I don't I don't know if you're familiar with, but Ned Holloway of the Holloway uh, Centers, uh, he is a psychiatrist out of the state. And he makes the analogy of the ADHD mind as a Ferrari. It's very powerful, right? Uh, but it has bicycle brakes, right? And so we have an amazing, amazing machine. But then when it's time to actually slow down, so that impulsiveness, you know, like regulated emotionally, right? Remember certain things is actually quite hard to do. Um, but that doesn't mean that we 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 learn to actually regulate those brakes. Mm, yes. That's a very powerful analogy. I feel that analogy. I I, right? I, I yes. can identify with that analogy. Mm. Um, when it comes to trauma, you had mentioned trauma. Mm. I know in my own experience, my own ADHD experience, my own emotional dysregulation has been one of the biggest ways that ADHD has shown up in my life. Yeah. Um, not really knowing how to manage my emotions. And then you add a mental health crisis in my family on top of that. And yes. oh, there's, we're going down, mayday, mayday. Yes. Uh, I often joke that I was like a Katy Perry song, you know, you're hot mm -hmm. and you're cold, you're yes, yes and you're yes no. Yes and you're no, no. you're in yeah. and out. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> that was my theme song. Um, and I found that a lot of that came from me not really knowing how to process traumas mm -hmm. in my life. Have you noticed anything around um, trauma and ADHD in, in the work that you do? Yes. Um, so <clears throat> like we said at the beginning, there's there's a lot of negativity that is attached to ADHD, right? And I think that we need to sort of like shift that narrative um, and, and begin to look at it from more of like that neurodiversity perspective that there's a, there's a spectrum and we all fall under that spectrum. And that's, you know, because there is neurotypical that is usually like 90% of the population doesn't mean that that's the right way of doing things, right? And so what I see is that often we, we do things in one way to sort of like fit that 90% of the population, but we forget that there's that, you know, like, you know, 10%, 8% of the population that actually doesn't fall under that and and they need to do things in a very different way right and so because i think that we have you know get so much negativity attached to that um then we get that negative self talk that happens all the time right and so there's a very interesting stat and every time that i sort of share it people are like sort of drop the jaw you know and so the stat tells us that, that uh, kids with adhd receive about 20,000 pieces of negative feedback by the age of 10 compared to their peers that is, I made the math, uh, I just remember what is per day, and that's five pieces of negative feedback extra than their peers. That's a lot of negativity. That's a lot of, you know, saying like, sit down, don't do that, focus, you know, um, you know, don't, don't, don't be so impulsive, you know, like, um, no, that's, that's not right. Do it this way. <laughs> so it's a lot of, it's a lot of like negative, you know, sort of feedback and, and if you think about it, by the time that you're an adult, you have been hearing this for like 20 something years, you believe it. Yeah. Yes. And on top of that, we add, you know, like if there's there's trauma, you know, like there's abuse or, you know, anything that happened during the, that childhood um, and then it compounds. Right. 
Mm -hmm. And so this idea, and that that's why I like working with a psychological practice is because, you know, if, if we do have complex, you know, cases, um, I can do the now as a coach, right? I don't go to the past. I always stay here in, in what, what are we doing now? What's working and how are we going to move forward, right? And so if we do need to talk about the past, then I can refer to sort of the amazing psychologists that work um, for Fox and Associates and, and sort of multi-model approach right hmm. um but becoming aware aware of where you're at i just come back to the same thing over and over right like you discover that you have adhd it's hard to sort of you know maybe put, put a handle on your emotions or your impulsivity right and and figuring out why realizing like why why am i why am i in this place right so that's the first step becoming aware and then from there there's lots of strategies that we can put around um the function and to thrive. Mm. That is quite the stat that you threw out. I know, right? I, I felt that when you said that, because I feel like you just described my childhood. Um, and it's interesting. Uh, I don't know if you've ever read the book um, Scattered Minds by Gabor Mate. Yes. I <laughs> hated that book. Yes. <laughs> Um, and I was reading it at a time when I was trying to understand my child's AD, ADD. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when I heard that the lack of attunement that my child was receiving from me had maybe influenced that, I, I think I took the book and I chucked it across the room because, you know, we already have enough mom guilt. That's right. <laughs> so, but I remember picking the book back up. And as I kept yes. reading, I read if a lack of attunement wires a brain a certain way, then mm -hmm. attunement can rewire a brain a certain way. Yes. And I'd love to hear your perspective on, you know, the idea that for myself, I, I heard for up to age 10, absolutely every day, five extra corrections above probably the average person. Yep. I remember as a kid thinking to myself today, I'm not going to get into trouble. It was my goal as a little girl who wanted approval from adults, but couldn't seem to get myself out of trouble. I was always in trouble and I didn't mean to. I was like, today, my goal is to not get in trouble. And I don't think I ever reached that goal because I just, well, ADHD. And and so I, 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 I feel that when you mentioned that stat, that's how I feel. Yeah. And the the lack of, of say, attunement there was almost making my ADHD worse. Yes, uh, absolutely. Whereas as an adult and starting to understand, oh, this is the way my brain works and more understanding from others around it. I feel like my brain has gone through a bit of a rewiring mm -hmm. that you know, has a bit of a settling and anchor to it. I don't know. Yes. Is that something that you hear from people? Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> So I'll just take it back. There's a couple of things that I want to say that you you touched upon. So I have a huge issue with what we call the condition, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. I'm like, there is no deficit of attention. If anything, there is a whole bunch of attention. And, you know, because the ADHD brain doesn't have that internal clock, it can pay attention to, to so many things. Yes. And often in the society, we call it the wrong thing, right? But who is to say that is the wrong thing? Um and so I want to call the, 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 you know, sort of attention back to that, that word attention, right? Because the ADHD kids become, you know, disruptive or, you know, it sort of like doesn't pay attention. And for me, it's not, you know, like seek, seeker of attention, but a seeker of connection, right? Um, kids and adults with ADHD feel things very intensely. Yes. And they need that connection. They need that reinforcement of saying, you know, like, you're good. You're showing up just the way that you are, right? And so really creating that sense of connection um, with our children, with our spouses, you know, in, in the workplace uh, is extremely important, right? Uh, because of all of the negativity that we attach, you know, to, to the condition, we have put people in a box, right? And mm -hmm. so it's just allowing people to... to just be the way that they are. Yes, they need to function in society. And, you know, there are things that um, they have to work really hard at doing. And usually is that mundane kind of stuff. Um, but it is an opportunity to rewire your brain, to look at it in a different in a different way, right? Uh, we certainly did at home, 
right? This is the, what, the, the reason why I ended up in this in this career, right? Just because, you know, ADHD runs in our family and we were struggling as a family and, and I didn't understand it past, you know, like the, the you know, my boy is a little bit hyperactive and my husband doesn't pay attention sometimes. That was the extent of my understanding of it. And I was living with two of them, right? And so, um, and we were struggling, right? We had, you know, wonderful moments. And then we had like, you know, just like the song that you say, you're up and you're down, right? And so, and so for me, it was more of, you know, understanding what they were going through, but also creating a whole bunch of connection and not only connection, you know, with my child, but then advocating and sort of creating that connection outside and sort of in the school system, you know, and becoming a very, you know, outspoken parent, you know, and saying, you know, like these are the things that actually work for my, for my child, um, and looking at our marriage, you know, with my husband in a very different way, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, I, I agree with you that we can totally rewire our brain and we can just look at it, you know, from from a different perspective um, and just, just, just change the way that we address certain conditions. And, and not because, you know, like, 90% of the population, it's a certain way, the other 10 has to comply, right? Like we should all have the ability to be in this world just the way that we were born. Yes, I love that. I I couldn't agree with you more. And I'm, I'm really grateful to hear that, you know, from you because you work in this specifically. And this is why I, I highly recommend anyone with ADHD to get this kind of coaching from someone like yourself, because nothing is set in stone. Oftentimes, I even felt it when I got the diagnosis. I felt like, oh, well, I guess I'm, I guess I lack, I guess I don't have this, these skills, like you say, but I love that you brought up, no, let's, let's figure out what your strengths are and let's figure out how we can scaffold skills where maybe there's lagging and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Let's work mm -hmm. on those skills. And so mm -hmm. what would be, one of the skills you have a course coming up. I, I highly recommend, highly yes. recommend anybody join your course, because again, these are the skills we need. You can thrive as an adult with ADHD, mm -hmm. but what would be one of the skills that you'll be working on with, with your class? Yeah. Um, so we look, as you say, like a whole bunch. And usually uh, what I do is we do like a, a two part um, sort of approach to this. We do six weeks where we call it sort of fundamentals and we learn everything about sort of ADHD and executive function. Uh, and then the second, you know, portion of the next uh, six weeks, uh, it's more focused on to you create your own manual, you know, you you kind of learn about yourself and um, it's, it's six weeks for you to sort of like become aware of what's working, what's not working, and then find sort of those strategies, right? Um, the, the, the skill that I get most people come in uh, to, to me saying like, I actually want to be organized and on time and I get, I want to get things done. So it all has to do with that sort of like management of time. Right. And so we, we did, we did talk about the sort of like that time blindness. Right. Uh, and so I, I often see sort of like those, you know, like eyebrows raising when we talk about time blindness and organization systems and, um, because at the end of the day, we, we live in a very linear way that is dictated by time, right? And so and so coming to, to the, that realization that we need to do things that are external and we need to externalize time, whether it is, you know, like having alarms, put in a calendar, there's some clocks that you actually... Um, I can't remember the name of, of the clock, but it's 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 a big it's a big white clock, and you sort of like say, okay, I'm going to put a timer for half an hour, and then when you turn that that lever, the lever turns and everything goes in red. So the the one half of that is all red, and as the time passes, that red diminishes, diminishes, diminishes until it's gone. So you actually have a really good visual of what that time, uh, or the pass of time is right. Um, of course, we can we can go on because there's there's so many things, right? Um, and I, I do get a lot of aha moments um, throughout all twelve weeks. So, yeah, that's amazing. Well, I would love to encourage anyone who's listening. Um, you do this on Zoom, is that correct? Yes, yes. So, and I get people from all over uh, the world. Uh, sorry, the the country, uh, and some people from the states as well. 
See, that's perfect. So if anyone's yeah. listening from anywhere and you're needing support, I, I know Maria personally. Um, I can vouch for her and her skills and her expertise. And also just you make people feel so comfortable and, and no one leaves your presence feeling uh, disempowered. Everyone feels really good leaving your presence. And so I just think it's incredible what you're doing. And and as an, a parent or a teacher who would have ADHD, you know, knowing how we can manage ourselves means that now we know how to help these students. And one of the things that I'm always advocating for um, when parents or teachers ask me, how do I help this child with hmm. ADHD? My, my instant question back is, well, how are you managing you? And yeah. when we start there and maybe take some coaching from someone like yourself, then, then we have skills that we can transfer because I find that it's not about necessarily having strategies to help these kids. It's about how do they catch how we are managing ourselves? We're yes. developing the, their prefrontal cortex by how we live our lives. And Correct. so- Never we underestimate model. the power model of modeling the functions, right? What yes, model it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so on, on that note, that's my recommendation. And honestly, thank you so much, Maria, for such an enriching conversation. I always learn a lot from you. I think that you're a brilliant expert in this area. And so thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate this space. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And to everyone else out there who are, who's listening in your life and in your relationships, keep being brave. All the rebels in the world stand up. If you're a rebel on the mind, you don't care with their mind. Hands up. They can't stop us. I hold this